This is a lesson for 10-1. What you're doing today is you are converting different kinds of numbers into decimals. The reason why we have to do this is because later on in the chapter, we're going to have these types of numbers and we're gonna to have to put them in order from least to greatest and we'll have to graph them on a number line. And in order to do that, you have to make them into decimals first. So the first slide here says, name as many forms of numbers as you can think of. Well, I'm just gonna tell you, there are decimals, there are fractions, there are mixed numbers, square roots, something called cube roots that you're gonna learn about today, and then percents. Those are the different types of numbers that we're talking about. The first type of number that we're talking about today are repeating decimals. Repeating decimals have the little bar over a number or numbers. Anything that is underneath this bar repeats. It goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. So if we have 0 0.6 repeating, notice that just the six is underneath that bar. So what is this number really? It's really 0 0.6666666666666. I'm gonna put a dot, dot, dot at the end. All right, what that dot, dot, dot means at the end is that it keeps on going on and on and on forever. Now, only the numbers that are underneath the little line repeat. So in this next one, we have 8.12. Notice both the one and the two are underneath the bar. So we have 8.12, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. At the end, that means it keeps on going and going and going. But notice that just the one and two are repeating, not the eight, because you only repeat what's underneath the bar. 4.835 with the eight, the three, and the five underneath the bar. So we have 4.835. 835, 835, dot, 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 at the end. So it keeps on going on and on and on forever, 835, 835, 835. Be careful on a question like this. Again, only the number or numbers underneath the bar repeat. Only the two is underneath the bar. Notice that the six and the seven are not. So we're just gonna have 6.7, and then it just repeats two, 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 two. Again, dot, dot, dot at the end. That signifies that it goes on and on and on forever. So those are repeating decimals. The next type of number are square roots. We use square roots in the last chapter. All right, we use square roots in the last chapter. On these school calculators, remember you have to hit the second button then the x squared button, which is really your square root symbol, then type in the number and then get equals. Remember that if you go to use a school device, all right, if you go to use a school device, you have to type in the number first. So if we wanted the square root of 56, you have to type in on a school device the 56 first and then use this button, all right, the two with the little x, all right, that will give you the square root. If you go to use a phone, you might have the SQRT button instead. You might have to do SQRT, then the number, or the number and then SQRT. Every calculator works a little bit differently. So if we go to type in the square root of 64, you're gonna hit the second button, then the X squared button, which is really the square root symbol, then type in 64 and hit equals, you get eight. It's eight because eight times eight is 64. That's what the square root really says. It says what time, what number times the same number gives you what's ever underneath the little square root symbol. The square root of 65. You're gonna have answers today, just like you had in the last chapter, that when you type in the square root, like the square root of 65 here, you get a big, long, ugly decimal answer. That keeps on going on and on forever. It will fill the whole entire screen on the calculator and it doesn't repeat anywhere. Negative square root of 65. Now the negative square root of 65, you're just gonna hit type in the negative button first. 
make sure you don't type in the square root of negative 65. If you go to type in the square root of negative 65 and put that negative sign right here instead, right in front of the 65, you'll get the wrong answer every time. You'll get an error on the calculator. So make sure when the negative sign is out in front, it's just gonna make your answer negative. So instead of positive 8.06, blah, 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 we would have negative 8.06, blah, blah, blah. All that negative sign does is make your answer negative. But again, you have to type in the negative sign first when you go to type it in. Don't type in the square root of negative 65. It doesn't work that way. So you know how to do square roots from the last chapter. This is brand new for everybody. If you're not paying attention right now, you're gonna to be totally lost and confused because you have never used this button before. Something called the cube root. Now with the cube root, notice how it looks like the square root, except we have a three there, all right? Remember from the square root, even on the device calculators, we had a two here, all right? Because it was like eight times eight is 64 or seven times seven is 49, or 10 times 10 is 100. That's the square root where we multiply the number out twice. What the cube root does is it's multiplying the number out three times. The number times the same number times the same number that equals eight in the end. How you use the calculators that we have here in school, you have to type in the number three first. That number three says, hey, we're gonna use the cube root. We have to type in three, then the second button, then the caret button. Now above the caret button on your calculator is this symbol right here, which is really that symbol. It's the square root with the little X there. That, what that X is, by typing in the three here, we're actually sticking that three in right there to take the cube root of the number. So three, second button, caret button, then your number, and hit equals, all right? So when you go to type that into the calculator, three, second button, caret button, eight, hit equals, and you'll get an answer of two. It's two because two times two times two is eight. You think it would be six, but it's not. Two times two is four, four times two is eight. The cube root of nine, three, second button, caret button, nine, and hit equals, you get 2.08008382323, blah, blah, blah. All right, big, long, ugly decimals. Now, let me show you how to do this on the device, all right? On the device, it works a little bit differently. On the device, On the device, we need to take a look at the calculator. On the calculator, you will not see a cube root symbol when it says standard, all right? When it says standard, you won't see it. You have to click these three little lines to change it to a scientific calculator, all right? We've changed it to a scientific calculator. Now, you still don't see the cube root button, all right? What you have to do is you have to hit this, see the second button in the upper left-hand corner? All right, right underneath the word trigonometry. All right, we have that second button. Look at, see where, the, see where the square root button is? Watch what happens to the square root button when I hit that second button. When I hit second, notice that it changed to a cube root button instead. All right, so you have to hit the second button. All right, you have to hit the second button and then it changes it to a cube root. So when you go to type in a number like eight, you have to type in eight then hit the second button and the cube root button. Notice it even comes up with cube root right there. When you do the square root, it says square root. When you're doing the cube root, it'll say, we're taking the cube root of eight. So again, let me show that to you again. All right, let's clear out. All right, let's clear this out. Um, let's go back to the standard calculator. So again, on the standard calculator, the cube root is not there. You have to hit these three little lines change it to a scientific calculator. Then if we wanted the cube root of eight, you type in eight first, hit the second button, then it changes it to the cube root button, which is the square root button with the little three there. And it does the cube root for you. 
So that's how you do it using the school devices or a laptop or a desktop calculator. You could also, you could also, you could also go right into Google. If you go to google.com and you type in cube root of whatever number and hit search, it'll come up with the cube root right away. All right, that's another way to do it. You can do the same thing with square root. All right, so that's a way to get around it. So the next thing, the next type of number, all right, those were cube roots. The next type of number are percents. Now with percents, there is a percent button on the school calculator. The school calculator, you're gonna type in the number first. So if we wanted 56%, you would type in 56 first, then the second button, then the left-hand side parentheses. When you take a look at these calculators, the left-hand side parentheses is right above the eight, right? It's right above the eight. So we have to hit 56, the second button, then the left-hand side parentheses. We're hitting that left-hand side parentheses because right above that left-hand side parentheses is the percent symbol. It's one of those purple symbols. That's why we have to hit the second button first. When you type that into the calculator, it will give you your answer. And the answer to 56% is 0 0.56. Type in seven, second button, and then the percent sign, you get 0 0.07. I thought you just moved the decimal here. We're gonna do that next, yep. Um, for 6.5%, all right, for 6.5%, you have 0 0.065. Now, on the, on the calculators that are on the uh, school devices, there is a percent button. Now, it's not, in, it's not in the scientific, all right? It is in the standard. So if you're still on scientific, you would have to switch it over to standard, all right? Notice that there is a percent button in that left-hand corner. However, the percent button doesn't work the same way that it does on these calculators. We could type in 56%, watch what it gives you, zero. We could type in 7%, watch what it gives you, zero. The percent button on these don't work for making it into decimals. It won't allow you to do it. So just like Byron said, there is a different way to do it, all right? The different way to do it is to move the decimal point, all right? To make a percent into a decimal, you move the decimal point two places to the left, all right? Two places to the left. That's how you make a percent into a decimal. So when we have the number 56, we would have to move the decimal point two places to the left. One, two, that's where our new decimal point is. So it becomes 0.56. 7%, that's what starts off at the end. 1, 2, it becomes 0 0.07. 6.5%, we're starting at the decimal point. 1, 2, here's our new decimal point. It becomes 0 0.065. So if you don't have one of these school calculators, you have to manually move the decimal point two places to the left. The calculator on the devices won't do it for you. All right? Take a look at the next time. The next time are fractions, all right? With fractions, the directions to change a fraction into a decimal is to do your top number divided by the bottom number. Or if you want to sound sophisticated, the numerator divided by the denominator. So one eighth. For one eighth, we have to do the top number divided by the bottom number. So one divided by eight. One divided by eight is 0. One, two, five, top divided by bottom. Negative one third, top divided by bottom, negative one divided by three. Negative one divided by three is negative 0 0.3333333. Or you could write it as negative 0 0.3 repeating. Be very careful on one like this. Notice how they're trying to trick you on this one. The negative sign is right directly in front of the fraction bar. Well, anytime that it's directly in front of the fraction bar, we actually need to move it up to the top. 
So this is really negative one four written like that. All right, so anytime it's out in front like that, just move it, it goes with the top number. So we're gonna do negative one divided by four. Negative one divided by four is negative 0.25. So with fractions, all you have to do is top divided by bottom. For the last kind of question, the last kind of question are mixed numbers. With mixed numbers, they're just like fractions except for the very first thing that you have to do. With mixed numbers, the number that's in front of the fraction goes in front of the decimal point. So this four is the big number. It goes in front of the decimal point. This negative three is your big number. It goes in front of the decimal point. This number five is the big number it goes in front of the decimal point. The rest of it is exactly what we just did. The rest of it, we just have a fraction. So we have to do top divided by bottom. So here you're gonna have one divided by two. One divided by two is 0 0.5. Now you're not gonna write 0 0.5 after the four and the decimal points. What you're going to do is you are going to ignore the zero. All right, ignore the zero in front of the decimal point, and we're just gonna move this five down. So it's ever after the decimal point, we put after the decimal point. Negative three and three fourths. We would have to do three divided by four. Three divided by four is 0 0.75. Again, ignore the zero and the point, and just move your 0.75 down here. So we have negative three, 0.75. Five and one third, we have to do one divided by three. One divided by three is 0 0.3 repeating. So again, ignore the zero, just move the 0 0.3 repeating after the decimal point. Go ahead and try these seven questions on your own, please. All right, go ahead and try these seven on your own, please. I'll give you about one minute. So eight and one fifth, the big number goes out front of the decimal point. So we have eight and decimal point. Then we have a fraction, one divided by five, top divided by bottom. One divided by five is 0 0.2. Ignore the zero, put whatever's after the decimal point, after the decimal point. So eight and one fifth is really 8.2. Five sixths, top divided by bottom. Five divided by six. 
5 divided by 6 is 0 0.83, or you can write it as 0 0.83 repeated. The square root of 45, big long ugly decimal when you type it in, 6.7082039322, blah, blah, blah. Cube root of 180. So you have to hit three, second button, carrot button, 180, and hit equals. You get 5.64621673, blah, blah, blah. Three sixteenths, top divided by bottom, three divided by 16, you get 0 0.1875. Negative 13%. Don't forget about that negative sign out front. Negative 13. Hit the second button and then the parenthesis button or the percent sign. You get negative 0.13. Or you can always move the decimal point two places to the left so that we have negative 0.13. Eight and two nines. The big number goes out front of the decimal point. So that eight goes out front. Then you have to do two divided by nine. Two divided by nine is 0 0.2 repeating. So we can have 8.2 repeating or 8.2, dot, dot, dot at the end.